Freaky Friday is intended for adults and is a show featuring adult conversations. Topics may vary, but are focused on human sexuality, fetish, and topics of intimate nature. Some may feel uncomfortable watching this show, and some topics may take you out of your comfort zone. We encourage everyone to stay and learn, as we hope this is an educational show. But stress that viewer discretion is advised. And if a topic makes you feel uncomfortable, please do not continue watching. Welcome to Freaky Friday. Welcome to Freaky Friday, where we dare to talk about taboo topics like fetish, bondage, sex, vibrators, and more. This isn't your dad's Friday night programming, but your mom loves it. Welcome to Freaky Friday, hosted by Mr. Anderson, who is the unboxable, uncanny advocating creator known as the Indie Comics Devil, who will tempt you with his devil's tales of fetish, monsters, and more. Also the giver of free hugs and spetters. Everyone watching this program will get virtual free hugs and space. It's time to get on with the show. Welcome to Freaky Friday. Music provided by the YouTube Audio Library. Produced by Silent Partner. Song name, Tied Up. Warning and disclaimer. The views and opinions expressed on this live feed are those of the guests, speakers, and or hosts and do not necessarily reflect the beliefs, official policies, ethics, or positions of the content providers, advertisers, additional hosts, and or guests, hosting sites, groups, or entities attached to this programming. Viewer discretion is advised. Here we are. Uh, while you guys are actually watching this, believe it or not, if everything goes right, I'm using the new feature on StreamYard that allows me to do pre-recorded so this is not live. Please make comments and I'll try to check them out. But I'm going to be doing a panel at Tampa Bay Comic Con while this is going live. Or actually, at that point, I should be getting dinner right before doing a late night panel from 1030 to midnight Friday night. So it's going to be a long, fun weekend at Tampa. Please come by. Remember, we're going to have copies of Barbara Unleashed on hand. And you can get those at HeroicsComics.com right now. And the special... Comics uh, in the special unleashed category, but by the time that you're watching this, you better pause the video and run because the unleashed comics category, or actually reward, I should say, is going to be turning off when the campaign turns off. And the campaign, I believe, goes off at 10 p.m. So you guys are running out of time already. You're already behind the gun. So stop right now and go over to Heroics, and I'll show you what the campaign looks like right now. And now Heroics itself. As a matter of fact, I'm going to play you the video. So check out what I have going on with Heroics. We're going to actually have to switch the rooms real quick. It's our back or pause room, and you can see it right there, Heroics Comics. We're going to play the video for you. Just so you know, this is the last time I'm going to do it. But, hey, you believe in something, you talk about it every place you go. At least that's how I feel about it. Are you ready for the one and only superhero on the planet to come save your city? JW's the world's only superhero. But guess what? He'd rather be wrestling. That's right. Discovered while on live television, saving a crowd from a falling Titan Tron, he's almost forced to be a hero. And how did they force him? They pay him millions of dollars. But JW is an interesting character. He's grown up to want to be a wrestler. It's in his blood. But he's also a complicated character, and you get to start on his journey today. You get to find out who JW is. You get to meet Jenna. There's a lot going on. You guys want to be part of this. It's part of the continuum heroics. See JW save the world one city at a time for the right price. And check out all the other amazing stories in the heroics campaign. Back it today. So that is it. We're down to the wire. We have great cards and stuff like that. Even a kinky character that we went over just a few weeks ago. And, 
you guys can go back and watch the other. By the way, this has been, this summer we decided that Freaky Friday is also going to be Freaky Fetish Friday. So we really focused on fetish. And that doesn't mean coming the fall we won't do a little more horror stuff. But I wanted this to be the fetish of, the summer of fetishes. It was also the summer of heroics. At night, we were a summer of fetish. And summer's almost gone. But we're already five minutes into the show. We only have 15 fetish minutes to get you informed. So let's get to it. Here we go. New York City Council candidate caught in BDSM dungeon shopping film about failed run. He is he did unfortunately not make it to uh, to be elected, but now he's going to be showing off his video. I don't know if this is stunt or not, but I'm going to watch that video. I think it's an interesting uh, idea that this guy might have lost in a, a race and might have been blackmailed using this video, and it sucks. But there's so much in the news today that you're going to get angry about. And I'm sorry to be the one to give this to you, but you know I give it to you raw. This is the reality of the situation. Having a fetish can be and is and will be held against you. I, I mean, we've talked about in the program. That free hugs and spanks sign has gotten me grief because people want to make it more powerful in even in anything that I ever wanted it to be. So it's just the reality of the situation. But we're going to move on to our next topic tonight. And if that movie comes out, I'll let you know. I'm sad to hear he lost it. We had talked about that at the very beginning of the summer. Breaking news for no one who's in fetish. This is covered by the U.S. Sun. Wonderlust, how Wonder Woman was inspired by sex life of bondage obsessed creator William Moulton Martson and Polly Lovecult. Just think about this, that in 50 years, people are going to be making judgment about me and all the things I did after I'm dead. And I'm okay with that. He's actually a more interesting person than anyone gives him credit for. Uh, he actually used lie detectors. He had nudity and orgasm experiments. He was actually behind creating a lie detector, believe it or not. He had bondage, threesomes, free love, sex cult, and he was a psychologist. And I'm sure a lot of people are like, kind of like, oh, wow, I can't believe he did all that. I'm like, sign me up. Is there a class I can take? This the guy sounds like the man. I mean, look, he came up with Wonder Woman. so. What else can you say? I mean, and it, it said, I know a lot more about it than probably the average person. He, he sounded like he actually really cared. And I hate that they're dragging him through this. But you ever go to a Comic-Con, which right now I'm in Tampa Bay, there are people dressed up as Wonder Woman who will look at my free hugs and spank son and go, I can't believe you're allowed to do that. A Beginner's Guide to Subspace. I thought this was an interesting article. It's been brought into you. Of course, for those who don't know, Subspace is the the almost Kama Sutra mental mind space that a submissive can go into, uh, often referred to as similar to a runner's high. It is when someone gets so lost in play that they have an out-of-body experience. And to everyone, it's a little different. But this is definitely something worth not only reading, but if you're a dominant, giving it to your submissive and submissives, it's good to know what may happen to you, actually. I've known a lot of submissives who once they start playing with a little more seasoned of a dominant, someone who knows how to like kind of keep the the interest going, the play time to be really in, engaging, that this will happen while they've never had it while playing with other people. So it's also the methodology. So it's a good article. It's brought to us by Healthline.com, by the way. All right, so here we go. Going over here, judge must decide whether a woman consented to bondage during sex oh man this is a hard one so this one this is a nightmare scenario and I, i'm not going to take any any i don't want to take a side on this one okay this is brought to us by the times col uh, col uh, columnist and this is from a victoria courthouse so obviously this is canada if you can't tell in that picture that flag up there is a canadian one they have such different rules it is scary that someone can turn around, and I'm not saying, and I stress this when I say this, I don't know these two people. This is a he said, she said thing, and I'm not taking a side. But I'll do it this way. From the dominant point of view, if you got all the permissions in the world, and you consented, and you did your, your, your BDSM survey, you sat down, and you got all the information right, you took notes, you have something filled out, you wouldn't be in a courtroom right now. I'm just saying as a dominant, it's scary as hell to think someone can use about it. But I have BDSM surveys people have filled out. So, and, and granted, that doesn't stop everything. On the other flip side, just because you fill out that paperwork, you don't sign everything away. But the person in this, and let's switch back to our fetish thing, and we'll move out of our heroics room. 
um, as we're talking about this. And my, my partners will be thrilled that I'm switching it back over. Here we go. <laughs> um, free, back to our Freaky Friday room. Um, you you got to understand that it, it's difficult, but the more you do, the easier it will be to not have to worry about things like this, if that makes sense. Take the right steps, negotiate, make sure everyone's okay. Safe words are important. Safe actions are important. And I'm even going to, and I'll tell you guys right now, one of the things I'm going to write into Barbara Unleashed is uh, going to be called uh, play actions. And those are things that allow you to fully understand something. What would have been good here, because it sounds like this was the first time. They don't really go into the whole case, but it does sound like it. So one of the things I'm going to start suggesting is that you have a condom and if the male tells the female, I'm ready to have sex with you, and the female says, no, I'm not ready, but I might be, he can hand her a condom and say, when you're ready, hand this to me. Even if you're tied up, you can hold on to it. You can tell me when you're ready, or this is your ability to consent by giving it to me. You could have even put it in a little pocket, have it part of her cuff, have somewhere where she can give it to you, or even maybe take off her ring like an action that tells you she's ready to have sex and that's vice versa. There are things that you can involve in that, but ultimately what you don't want to do is to have a miscommunication. It is always better to get consent before sex because sometimes people have regrets. Sometimes people feel they're coerced when you're not in the middle of something because there's even a moment where this girl said that she was terrified for her life and it might've been started off as play and it might've gotten too real for her. So that happens as well. So please do the right thing. Negotiate, have long conversations before you can begin to play. I know it kind of stinks a little bit, but it'll benefit you in the long run and it'll keep you out of court. Brought to us by Rolling Stone. Meet the dom, dommies who are demanding their submissives get vaxxed. That's right. I specialize in toilet play and I don't, and I cannot do it with people who are unvaccinated. Hey, they're helping the effort. That's awesome. And this is brought to us by Rolling Stone. That's, I mean, you never think of it that way, but yeah, in play, it's better to be vaccinated. Here's another story. All right, this is coming out. Uh, polyamorous all-girl country brand stand by their BDSM slave master. This is this is just sounding ugly, and this is coming out of Australia. They are they've arrested this man, saying that the things he's doing to these women is against the law. Now, this is a moment where it sounds like 24-7 they sign contracts, and you know if you've been on the show, I'm completely against contracts being signed. A BDSM survey is a willingness thing. It is a communication tool. A contract does not hold up in court, and that's why he's in trouble. You cannot make a person a real slave. Even 24-7, I cannot stress this enough to you, especially from a legal point of view, you can never consent to that. It's against the law, and he is facing serious charges now. I'm sure more will come out of this, and I'll try to keep track of it. But this stuff really happens, guys. Even in America, people get caught up in stuff. Don't think just because these are international stories. It's not happening in America. I guarantee you it will happen when we keep covering these stories. Because as I said, at the end of the month, we're going to make sure to do headlines. So from now on, the last week of the month, we're going to do that. So uh, if you have never used it, there's a Kinko dating app. It's not bad. There are not a lot of people in my area who have a fetish, so I can't tell you how great it is. I want to say I do hate dating apps that are fetish related because everyone's trying to sell you a scam, but that happens on the more vanilla ones as well. Just sucks that when you're really trying to connect with people, there's some scumbag out there trying to take advantage of the situation. Uh, sex expert brought to us by the Daily Star gives five tips to thrill your partner in the bedroom. This is good if you're a beginner. Check out the article. Just put it in here for you. So, you know, there's an international fetish day, right? I know about this. It's the third Friday of January. Kind of like when you had the fetish nights, they're the third Friday. So I knew about the International uh, Fetish Day. I celebrate in January. I did not know there was a National BNSM Day. How do I not know this? Um, there, There's, I guess, different places are starting to recognize it. This would have been last weekend, the 24th. And it's, it's, its history starts in 2003 with the Spanish club owner. Uh, confusingly, there's also the January one. Uh, why do we need a BNSM, uh, a World BNSM Day? Because it's time. I'm convinced. So how can I celebrate? I celebrate every day, my friends. I got a tattoo that says it. What if I want to experiment, but I don't want to have BD, I don't have any BDSM toys. You can improvise. Read this article brought to us by hotoctopus.com. That's right. Hot, that's cool, right? I love it. I love the name. And here are 30 deals for the BDSM day, but it's some cool stuff in here to look over. 
some some interesting things. Maybe one day we'll do a toy show where we just talk about the different toys. But I want to show you the rose gag kind of look cool. And then there are these luxury cuffs. There's some cool stuff, some good ball gags, some rope. Oh, man. I'm telling you, I'm ready to play already looking at all these toys. We're at our 15-minute mark, so we're going to wrap up the show. But you saw the scissors. Make sure you own a scissor if you're playing with rope, ladies and gentlemen, as it's the safe thing to do. And celebrate BDS Day with these BDSM Day with these kinky toy deals guaranteed to get you off. Again, some great things. All of these are in the comment. I mean, not comment. In the description of the video. Have fun. Stay kinky. I'm going to get back to my panel because right now I'm in Tampa Bay Comic Con. You guys stay kinky, stay fetish, and wave your freak flag. I am out of here. And on my way out tonight, we will play our warning. Just kidding. Uh, we're going to play my intro. Mr. Anderson is the unboxable advocating creator known as the indie comics devil who will tempt you with his devilish tales of fetish, monsters, and more. He is the giver of free hugs and spanks, and he is a partner in Continual Comics. Check out everything Anderson at chainlinks.site.